Welcome to the podcast, Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. You can find me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy. In today's episode 155, and it's entitled, Become as a Little Child. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you guys have nieces or nephews, or you know, if you happen to be a single parent with your own kids, there is something about little kids. They're just so happy. They're so joyful. They're so... They're 100% themselves. You know, as, as I'm, I'm actually back here in the Midwest spending time with my nieces and nephews, and it's interesting because you know what I really want? You know, I had a wonderful coat, a wonderful conversation with an incredible, incredible transformational coach this morning that is just amazing. And essentially what I told her, I told her, I want to become, as a little child, I want to become that level of compassion, that level of joy, that, that level of all of those things. So yesterday, one of, my, one of my nephews was sitting on, you know, just kind of sitting on a chair and watching his shows. And... Uh, he was eating these goldfish crackers that happened to be like baby Yoda shaped. And, you know, and it was interesting because other people, he wouldn't give them one and I didn't even ask for one. And then finally, after I sat down with him for a while, he offered me one. Now I just eaten a really good cookie, so I actually didn't even eat it, but <laughs> it was, it was interesting because he has no problem saying, no, you can't have my goldfish crackers, even though he's got an entire bag. Now, sometimes we would sit there and think and be like, well, he's got an entire bag. He's got to share. What's wrong with him? Well, what's wrong with him is nothing. What's wrong with him is he knows how to ask for what he wants, and he knows how to tell you what he doesn't want. You know, he, he, he happened to be watching a show it's like Bluey and Peppa Pig and, and he'd been watching them for quite a while. And so I was finally able to entice him to watch something else like Super Mario Brothers movie. But it had to be his choice. It had to be his decision. So what does this have to do with any of us? Here's what it has to do with us. I think as we go through these, as we have been through our life, we have learned things that have not worked for us. We have learned that sometimes the world doesn't work the way you want it to work. And it's kind of paralyzed us. I mean, I think so much about what's the right thing to do, what's not the right thing to do, that it's exhausting. But as I've shared before, the voice of the Spirit is, that leads us to joy and wonderful experiences is different. It literally has a different feeling than all that other crazy leprechaun thinking that we have in our heads. If God wants to tell you something, He's going to tell it to you. So why is it that we struggle so much with this? Why is it that we can't just be like little kids? You know, this morning, right before this conversation I was having, I was led to look up in the Book of Mormon in Mosiah 3, 19. And it says, For the natural man is an enemy to God, and has been from the fall of Adam, and will be forever and ever, unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit, and putteth off the natural man, and becometh a saint through the atonement of Christ, the Lord, and becometh as a child submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to submit to all things which the Lord seeth fit to inflict upon him, even as a child thus submit to his father. Becometh as a child, submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, no, you might be sitting there thinking, sometimes little kids are not patient. Sometimes they're not. 
And, but they are who they are. One minute, my six-year-old nephew, Austin, is the happiest little boy in the world. And the next, he's not. And the next, he is. But he is so full of love. He comes up to me all the time and gives me these huge hugs and says, I love you, Joseph. And there's not many greater feelings in the world than that. Of course, you know, having the girl of my dreams, you know, saying that same thing to me, you know, would, would be pretty awesome as well. But for right now, it is so awesome to have that experience. So what, like, what is today about? Today is about getting back to you as a child. I don't mean, and, and if, if you do this, you're welcome to, but I don't necessarily mean you have to go back, you have to watch all the shows you used to watch when you were a little kid. But you have to do you. It's like last Thursday, there's a, <clears throat> there's a pinball place that's about 20 minutes from my sister's house. And it happens to have two of the games on free play, which means you pay a certain amount to go in, and then after that, you don't have to pay for anything. Like, all the games are included. And there was this one I really, really wanted to go to. And there was a lot of stuff going on that day. And, you know, I had my nieces and nephews and everything else going on. And I just made a decision. I guess it was actually Friday now that I'm thinking about it. It was, it was Friday. I made a decision that I was just going to go and I was going to you know, go play pinball and go have a great time. And you know what I did? I planned on going from about, oh, four hours, so like three to seven. And by seven o'clock, I was having such a good time, you know, that I kept playing. And I ended up staying till like 9.30. Now you might be thinking, that's ridiculous to stay there till like for six and a half hours. But these were games that, well, especially one of them that's hard to find called Wizard of Oz that's really cool and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I could play on free play, which it means you don't have to pay a dollar every time you're playing the game. And I went and I had a great time. And, and you know what? I came back and I was, I was happy. When you do the things you love to do, like my... My, my nephew, Austin, there's times that I'll try to video call him. Be like, hey, can I talk to you for a few minutes? He's like, no, I'm watching a show. You know, I sit there and think, oh my goodness. I can't believe that he's not talking to me. He's a terrible little boy. Of course not. But why is it that when we tell somebody no because we want to do something else, that we become a terrible little boy? I think every one of us, we really just want to have love. We just want to feel love in our lives. Sometimes we think a relationship will be there, give, give us that. Some, other times we think other things will give us that. You know, one of the other things that my nephew has, my, my nephew Austin has, is compassion. There was a moment so beautiful last night that I hesitate to even share, but I'm going to. And... You know, I was, I was laying by him as he was going to sleep. And he turned to me and he's like, Joseph, now keep in mind, this was with all the passion and love that a little kid can muster. It's like, like, but not really, because he's not trying. Anyways, he said, you know, Joseph, what was your doggie's name? And I told him. And he's like, Joseph, do you miss your doggie? And it was said in such a profound, deep way. I told him, yeah, I do miss my doggie. There is that love in little children that is just amazing.
You know, we also went last night to his trunk or treat at his school, and it was freezing cold, like so freezing cold. And we saw some of his friends, and he was so happy to see them. And they were so happy to see him. They didn't sit there thinking about the perfect right things to say to their friends. They haven't learned to live in that world yet. They were just so happy being together. They didn't have to say something every few seconds. They were just so happy being together. It is, there was that compassion, there was that love, there was that joy. This little boy exudes joy, which is probably why he has so many friends. He wants to be everybody's friend. But somehow we get, along, get in our head, oh, we have to be a certain way to have friends or to have the, the right friends. We're all just looking for love. And little kids are that pure love because they haven't been contaminated by what Sydney, Sydney Banks, the Scottish mystic, called contaminated thought. They are just pure. They can say what they want. They can do what they want because nobody told them otherwise. So what about us? Like, what if we could get back to that? That state of pure love? I, I've been reading, you know, many of you are probably already aware that Matthew Perry, that played Chandler on Friends, passed away by the time you guys are hearing this about a week ago. And it just so happens that last about a week before he died, I picked up his book. And I started reading it. I started listening to it. And it was so wonderful and so fascinating. And he also had so many challenging, hard experiences in his life. I started drinking when he was like 13 years old because of a lot of those challenges. And then he struggled with it for the rest of his life, wishing like anything he could be rid of that. And one of the things that he said in there, or one of the ideas that I took from that and some of the other things that I've heard, all these people that seem like they have everything known to man still face a lot of those mental battles that you and I face. But if we could just recognize, if you really pause with some of your thoughts, you'll know which ones are true and which ones are from the spirit and which ones are from the crazy leprechaun thinking. There's only one answer. This, this is according to Joseph that gives us happiness. And that's looking to God. The more we look to a loving Heavenly Father, the more we hear His voice. It says in the Scriptures, My, my sheep hear my voice. the more we spend time with Heavenly Father, the more we know and hear His voice. If you're looking for answers, if you're looking for solace, if you're looking for peace in any other place, 
you gen- you're not going to find it. The hardest times I've ever been through in my life Heavenly Father has been there for me. Even the times I really haven't been there for Him. We're looking for answers. We're looking for this joy in so many other places than where it comes from. If you're looking for a spring of water, the only place you're going to find it is in the forest where the spring of water is. If you're looking for that cool, refreshing, happy joy, it comes from Him. He entices us by the Spirit, but in a good way. Entices us towards the most amazing things that will be so good for each of us, will make us so happy. You see, my, my nephew Austin has not learned yet that the world is supposed to work a certain way. And so he lets himself just be guided by what he wants to do in that moment. Every one of you, when you don't pay attention to all of your contaminated thinking, you are joy. You are pure love. Because that's how we were created. We were created in the image of God. And we know that God is love. And there's nothing that you could do that would take away his love for you. I want to ask you, what is the thing that brings you joy? I mean, like, just that childlike joy, that excitement. For me, one of the things that brings me that joy is ice hockey. But I've had quite a few injuries in the past year or so that I've been trying to heal, and I haven't been able to play ice hockey. And that is the thing that I love more than any, almost anything. There is no feeling like being, th- being on the ice, even talking to you guys about it, being on the ice and cutting through the ice, it is amazing. But even being in this moment, as long as I'm not thinking about having to be too perfect, be too whatever, and try to sort of stay on the topic, that can be joyful too. You can find joy in anything you do. It's just when we listen to all that crazy leprechaun thinking that says we can't find joy in something. You can always find joy in something. And sometimes you're going to find joy in saying no to one experience so that you can have a different experience that you want to have. you got to make choices. Not making a decision is a decision. I know sometimes for me, it's it's like, I don't know, we're trying so hard. You know, like if you've seen Chronicles of Narnia, the lion, witch, and the wardrobe, they get they get to Narnia through a wardrobe. And so many of us are still standing there in front of the wardrobe, opening it and shutting it, opening and shutting it, opening and shutting it, trying to find our joy. Your joy, a lot of times, is not going to be found in the same place. Now, you may have that thing you love, like, you know, for me, I mentioned the ice hockey. I think joy is really when when we're just not thinking we have to live a different way than we are. But you might be saying, Joseph, if I just live in joy all the time, I'm not going to get any work done. I'm I'm not going to have any money. I'm not going to whatever. Actually... I remember hearing something about, you know, somebody was being interviewed and they asked, you know, what was it that helped them, you know, make all that money? 
And they said they stopped doing the things that they hated. That's it. They stopped doing all the things that they hated. Or didn't love. If I give you permission today to stop doing anything that you didn't want to do, what would it be? You know, as I paused for a moment and did that as well, I couldn't really think of anything that I don't love that I'm doing. I've got plenty of thinking about having to do more, having to do less. And I guess one of the things that comes up is certain shows that I watch that don't really bring me joy, but it's kind of like you just want to finish them. (laughs) What could that be taking the place of in my life? Joyful experiences. Actually, I I can think of one. Um, Surfing. Like, basically on Facebook and Instagram, I think sometimes, I don't know, we feel this almost obligation to make sure there's nothing happening in our friends' lives that we don't know about. If my friend puts something up on Facebook and I don't see it, it's okay. I mean, if you have to find out via Facebook on certain things, then maybe they're not that... Maybe you're not as close to friends. I think we're so worried about, there it is. I think it's, we're so worried about missing out on doing the better thing or the right thing or the next thing. That kills all the joy. We're worried about missing out. It, it is, it's fear of missing out. We're so worried about missing out on one experience that it's like, ugh. I mean, a, a funny example, we, I, I actually really enjoy haunted houses. I'm, I'm the guy that walks in, literally walked in, and basically says, oh, man, these, are, these decorations are awesome. Nice work. Oh, that's a nice costume. How are you doing today? You know, and like, at, at this last time I was walking through, I was like, wow, you're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> that really happened. <laughs> My friends thought that was funny. Um, but I went to this same haunted house last year, and it was way better. And it's like we're constantly, compared to this haunted house that we went to, it was, it was pretty good, but it wasn't what we went to last year. Oh, well. Who cares? We're so busy comparing our lives and our season with somebody else's season or even our past seasons. Becoming as a child is enjoying your season your current season. I mean, I've I've been watching the World Series as the Diamondbacks are playing in the World Series. Well, by the time you guys hear this, they'll be, I'm recording this on Halloween, so there will already have been a World Series champion, and maybe it'll be the Diamondbacks, and maybe it won't. But it's like the more a hitter thinks about getting off the, off the snide, or, you know, getting, if, if they haven't got a hit for a while, The more they think about that, the more they're probably not going to get a hit. Instead of letting it go and showing up. It's funny. I uh, (laughs) I was I was in my my uh, nieces and nephews' batting cage a while back, and I was the the ball was at max speed, and I was smoking it like I was just going crazy. And I'm like, oh my goodness, if I would have lived my life differently, I could have been a major league baseball player. And for whatever reason, I've, I've been taking my nephew to the batting cages. He's actually a pretty good baseball player. 
And uh, he helped me actually enjoy the game more. And I was like, ah, oh, dude, let me, let me take a shot. So I swung at the 70 mile per hour fastballs. I mean, I don't think I hardly hit any of them. And then even yesterday I swung and I swung at 60 mile per hour fastballs. And my, I don't know if I was hitting it wrong or what happened, but it hurt my hands so bad. So here I'm thinking in one moment, I'm like, hey, I could, be the, I could have been the greatest baseball player in the world. And, and then in this moment, I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> Don't let the joys of yesterday, like, overwhelm the joys of today. You had a different time of life. Like, this morning, I, I went to the gym, and the gym I go to, it's like a community center type place. And so there were some older ladies in the pool, and they were doing their aerobics. And I was sitting there thinking about, like, oh, man, you know, like, just having compassion for them because they're at later years in their life. Well, I don't need to compare where I'm at with where they're at or where they're at with where I'm at. I think the only question is, am I doing the things I need to do and the things I love to do? I mean, C.S. Lewis's book, The Screwtape Letters, says, most men live their entire lives doing neither that which they ought to do nor that which they, which they want to do or enjoy or one of those words. Are you living your life the way that you want to live it? And if you're not, why not? Stop listening to the voices, whether it's your parents, whether it's anyone else around you. They're dealing with all their own demons as well. You know, in Matthew, in Matthew Perry's book, his biography, he, t- he talks plenty about all the demons that people face. It doesn't matter. Like, we look at them and say, oh, if only I had, you know, all, all his money, all his whatever, I'd be, I'd be in an amazing place. His life was horrible. Yes, he was on Friends, and yes, he was in some movies. But according to his own words, he would have traded, he would have traded lives with the guy on the street. And I think he even quoted Jim Carrey in that book, or that basically said, I wish everybody could get famous to find out it's not the answer. What is the answer? What fills that gap? What fills that void in your life? It's Heavenly Father. I have no other answer for you. It's Heavenly Father. You know, I thought it was really cool that Diamondbacks pitcher, before he pitched uh, one of his games, uh, back when, right when we beat the Phillies, They said he was in the dugout and he was reading his Bible. That was so cool. And and it also taught me, I don't have to go through the scriptures studying like a madman. I can literally just be there with the scriptures. I can be there with the Book of Mormon. Some days I'm going to be out of it. I'm going to try the best that I can. And that's going to be okay. When we take the perfection of life, actually, there was something interesting this coach said to me either today or in one of our other, another conversation. She said, you don't have to be perfect because you're already perfect. We were created in the image of God, so We were created the way that he desired and wanted us to be created. I can't even fathom that. I can't even understand that. The the rules that we have to follow in life are very simple. And there's not that many. For years, I, I felt like I had to be perfect to return back to Heavenly Father's presence. I didn't want to do anything that would take away from that. I realized I turned something good into something crazy. Always thinking, always overthinking. It can be so exhausting.
because becoming as a child is, once again, full of love. You are full of love. I hope you really feel that in this moment. The more that you let the things go around you, let your past successes and your past failures go, you're a different person now. How do you want to be? I don't know about you. I just want to not overthink so much and move forward in my life. And that sounds pretty cool to me. Throw myself into the things that I want to with reckless abandon. That sounds fun. We are the ones that limit ourselves. It's like I just invested some money into a bunch of different retreats and stuff next year. And then I might have the opportunity to work with this other incredible coach and do a three and a half day retreat with her, just one on one. And it's like, oh, I can't do that because I'm going to do all these others. And it's like, why can't I do both? You know, I was pulling up something to read, and something else popped up. And it's interesting because I, I, I really do. I enjoy the show, The Simpsons. If you really think about it, like, the dad's always drunk. The kids are always going crazy. Like, if you look at most cartoons like The Simpsons and such, they're not going after their dreams. They're surviving the day. Now, I'm not against those shows. Like, like I said, I, I enjoy it. But we don't have to do the things that we don't love to do. I came across this really, really cool post that I really liked. And this happened to come from... Um, one of the times I was... St I just hopped on Instagram and found this. But this was so cool. It says, it says, touring with a Broadway show right after college was one of the most exhilarating experiences of my life and such a dream come true. But I always posed some spiritual challenges. I learned how to rely on my faith in new ways I hadn't had to before. On tour, everything around you is always changing. Studying the scriptures and journaling became a way to stay grounded. I learned in such a new way that Jesus Christ is constant and always there for me through difficult times. Many of the spiritual experiences I have had in my life have been Heavenly Father helping me have the courage to chase my dreams and pursue a career in entertainment. Even though the talents I have been given are ones you can put on a stage and clap for, I've struggled with self-confidence for most of my life. When I look heavenward, I am reminded time and time again that through Jesus Christ, weak things can become strong. One of my favorite scriptures says, and I will also be your light in the wilderness, and I will prepare the way before you. Inasmuch as you shall keep my commandments, you shall be led towards the promised land. And you shall know that it is by me that ye are led. That's in 1 Nephi 17, 13 in the Book of Mormon. And then he goes on to say, During my first dance recital as a teenager, I remember feeling a happiness so much bigger than myself and having the thought, this is going to go somewhere. You need to take this feeling and chase it as far as it goes. I had no idea what that meant at 14, but ever since then, I've just kept following that joy. Looking back, I see that experience and so many others as God's guiding light in my life. As I continue on that path, I discover more and more that our Heavenly Father is rooting for our happiness and righteous endeavors. As we follow Him, He will guide us where we need to be. In the quiet moments of my life when I've desperately felt inadequate, Christ has loved me. 
been my light and reassured me that I'm going in the right direction. To me, those moments make it worth it to follow the Savior. Oh my goodness, I read this and I just love this. I'm, I would love to have this guy on my podcast. It doesn't say his last name. This was put on my, on the, ch- my, the church's Instagram account. But this, guys, when you had that moment in your life, when you felt that joy, when you felt lit up, when you felt, hey, go in this direction. This is going somewhere. I've had that. And then we get all the thinking in the way. Stop worrying. Like Once you have that feeling, move forward with everything that you have in that direction and know that it will go somewhere good. Faith is moving forward even when... There's all kinds of stuff around you. It's crazy. When I, when I first got here this morning, I'm at a library. When I first got here, there were so many crows outside. It looked like an episode of The Birds, if you guys have ever seen the Alfred Hitchcock movie. And now I look up and they're totally gone. Like, I don't see a crow in sight and the telephone wires were lined with crows. Okay, I think I just saw one fly, but it's like... It goes away. If you just don't pay attention to it, stop thinking that the voice in your head is the voice of God. If God wants to tell you something, it will tell you. He will tell you. You will know and you will feel that inside. Like, whoa, what was that? Because it feels joyful. It feels beautiful. It feels wonderful. You don't have to second guess every feeling that you have. I mean, plenty of times for me, it's like, you know, you walk by somebody even or by a girl and you're like, oh, is that the one? Is that the one? Is that the one? Talk about a cruddy way to live life. Having to think if every single person you walk by is the one. Why do we do that? That's not joyful. What would be joyful is just seeing everyone else as, as my brothers and sisters and just loving every one of them. Stop worrying so much about who you're offending, who you're not offending. Live your life because that's where the joy is found. I would invite you to go do the thing that you felt that really joyful feeling as that guy named, as that article I just read described. He felt something inside that just said, wow, this And if you haven't, if you don't feel you've had that, go to Heavenly Father and talk to Him. Heavenly Father is the best coach ever. He really, really is. He's the all-knowing coach. What better coach do you want than that? So guys, Go live your life. Go enjoy your life. And don't be so stuck on what's going to give me joy. If you don't know what's going to give you joy, go try stuff. It's okay to try something and then it not to work out. It's okay to try something and be like, yeah, that's not for me. Even though I know from my own personal experience, sometimes we're like, no, this is what God wants for me. And then you do that thing and it's like, uh, I don't feel that joy. I don't feel that love. And when I ask God, he doesn't say that's what he wants me to do. Next. Next. Try stuff. It's like, you know, sometimes my, my nephew will get frustrated when he's doing batting practice. It's like, dude, stop it. You learn from it. Beating yourself up about missing that last ball does nothing. You either either got under the ball, you either hit it right, or you got over the ball. What can you learn from it? Oh, uh, I I took my eyes off the ball. Oh, you know what? I I have to watch the ball, the bat go through the ball. Like, I don't know what it is for you guys, but anyways... Go live your life. That's what this is about. It's about living our life with joy and reckless abandon and not overthinking about everything we're doing 
and not paying so much attention when all that overthinking does come in our heads. So whatever you felt guided to do today, go do it. And if you haven't felt guided to do anything, go try something out that you think might give you joy and see what happens. Now, if you've made it to this point in the podcast, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. I don't know how you got here, but that way, if you ever want to get back here again, it's right there for you in your subscriptions. And if you haven't already joined us, one of the really cool things that I do that's free for anyone that would like to participate is each Monday morning at 10 a.m. Arizona time, I host a group coaching call for Happy and Single. Anyone is welcome to come on. And you can even receive a little bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching time with me, depending on how many people are in the call. Now, every now and then that schedule changes. So you can go to the website happynsingle.com to be able to look at the schedule and also to be able to find the link to the Zoom room. Now, at the same time, if you would prefer a more one-on-one -on -one type of coaching experience where you can sit down and share your hopes and dreams and, and just kind of the stuff going on in your world. Then there's another option available for you as well. Now, the bulk of my business is actually doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. If that's something you're interested in exploring, I've got a few spots open in my coaching practice. You can just message me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy, and we can sit down and have a chat. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. I've worked with people across the world. I do everything over Zoom, so I actually make it pretty much. Thank you guys so much again for listening. And go out and live your adventure.